impact. Living in a memory. Hey guys, thank you for coming in today. Uh, today we are talking to a guy that we have been watching since 2019. And if you have not seen Pastor Brandon Holdhouse, uh, when he's on YouTube, you <laughs> will love it. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Brandon has a habit of uh, aggravating the world in a, such a way that YouTube um, says goodbye to him quite often. And then right. somehow he gets back on. <laughs> and uh, but on this show, this impact podcast, what we endeavor to do is to talk to men that are impacting the world and impacting their world around them. And so Pastor Brandon certainly is one of those gentlemen. And uh, this guy knows the word of God. He preaches the word of God without apology. And as I told you just a little bit ago, I'm finally doing a podcast that my wife will watch uh, she has not watched one of them since, but she finally told me I'm going to watch this one. So, <laughs> Pastor Brandon, thank you for coming in. I, I can't even tell you. I, I told my wife, I was like, I hope I don't come across too much as a fanboy, you know. <laughs> so, but uh, we we absolutely love your church, love your ministry, okay. and watch everything we can. And there is not a day that goes by that we don't watch something that we're like, huh. Wow. I never knew that. And so I went to Bible college and seminary was sure. in the ministry for 20 years. Wow. And every time I'm like, I never learned that in seminary. What happened? <laughs> so um, thank you for coming in. I, really okay. such a blessing. So um, hey, yeah, thanks, man. I, I appreciate it, man. It's great to meet you. And, yeah. um, and maybe we're going to have you out someday in California to come speak. Um, so, hey, awesome. Thanks for being, let me be on your show, man. Oh yeah. We, uh, as a matter of fact, we used to travel to California, uh, when we were bodybuilding, my wife and I both, we were both pro, uh, I was a pro bodybuilder. She was a pro figure competitor okay. and we were out in California out there near Jack's church, uh, okay. never went to his church, but oh, we were wow. in, yeah, we were there three, two to three weeks out of the month, every month and, uh, oh, training, wow. That's awesome. uh, training what we called high-end clients out there. So <laughs> oh, okay. people with a lot more money than sense, quite honestly. <laughs> so, okay, gotcha. Um, I gotcha. But today we are going to talk to Pastor Brandon about what is going on in Bible prophecy, but I want to approach it from a different aspect because this is the guy to talk to, I believe. I want to know on this in the spiritual realm what's going on because okay. if god is real if satan is real then that means satan is operating in everything that we see on this planet because we know he is the prince of the power of the air he is the little g god of this world he has the title deed from man actually i believe jesus um has uh has that back uh yeah. you can correct me if i'm wrong you're right but uh, but I do believe so. And um, God, Jesus owns the uh, deed and the keys to sin, death, and hell. So, um, but he, Satan, is quite persistent and I believe uh, quite delusional. So tell us, Pastor Brandon, what is going on behind the scenes? Tell us what we're seeing and then tell us what's going on behind the scenes, man. What, what, what is Satan hoping to accomplish here that we're missing? Yeah, man, excellent question. And, and so it's tater chip, let it rip. Let's just uh, let's just start with the whole ball of wax. Yeah. What we're seeing on a geopolitical level can only be explained from a spiritual aspect because mm -hmm. none of this makes sense. And, and what happens is on a human level, when things don't add up and things are are way beyond human, like no, let me explain this. When things are anti-human, okay, like yeah. someone will make a decision, uh, whether it's Biden or or any world leader, and it benefits no one. It actually hurts everybody involved. What you start realizing is that is a demonic influence because the demonic realm, satanic realm is anti-human. They want to destroy all human beings. 
So we talk about, you know, the, the depopulation program, all the other junk um, that they're trying to do. That's a that's a, a non-human motive. And we're starting to see a lot of non-human motives all over the planet. OK, right. So first of all, you then you have to take a step back and realize. What are we talking about here when when before I get into prophecy, when people are questioning whether a man is a man or or, or he can menstruate or or you know, we have to put yeah. tampons in the man's room or a woman can be a guy and yada, yada, yada. And when we're at that level, you have to realize it's not just mental insanity. It is just flat out wickedness because it's an affront to the creator. Right. When you when you see that. So what people should take a step back and realize is, wait a second, this is a whole new ball game. Now, let me add now a geopolitical uh, example of what we're talking about. Israel. Um, when you see the anti-Semitism and the support for terrorists like Hamas, who decapitated babies, took out babies out of the mother's womb and 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 hung the baby in front of the mother before they killed her. That is non-human. That is Nazism. That is that is Islamic terrorism. But beyond that, it's demonic. It's totally demonic, and 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 we're seeing this like all over the place. So the only answer is, well, well, you know, maybe we can sit down with these people and reason. No, you can't, because if you're being demonically influenced, there's three levels to this in demonic warfare. Well, actually, four. But let me explain it to the audience. The first is influence. Okay, so you and I, Jeff, can be influenced by by Satan. Okay, yeah. he can put thoughts into our heads. Demons can put thoughts on our heads and tempt us, and that's normal. Okay, that's normal spiritual warfare. Then you go to, go to the second level, which is uh, suppression. What happens at this point is that if the demon or Satan or whoever is is in the temptation can get the believer um, locked into a particular sin then they will actually suppress the person in it. And it, the longer the person stays in it, the more they lack the power to get out of it on their own. Okay. Man, that's good. They will, they will have good. to have the Lord intervene or a brothers and sisters in the Lord to get him in there. Right okay. here. Yeah. Yeah. And so that that's called suppression. And mm -hmm. that's where a lot of Christians sometimes don't realize that they actually have a demon that's actually holding them down in it. Okay, if this continues, then you move to the third level, which is um, oppression. So you go influence, suppression, oppression. Now, here's the thing. On oppression, oppression can happen to a believer. And that means that paranormal activities start happening to that individual. When I, what I mean? Well, they can have start. They start to have demonic dreams, and a lot of people report to me that they had demonic dreams. Uh, the secular world will talk about um, uh, sleep paralysis. That's actually it's not a a, a a secular thing. It's actually a demonic thing where the demon will actually pin the person down, and the person can't get the words out. They can't wake up, and they can't get the words out. They'll try to say Jesus, and then eventually they'll be able to say it, and Jesus' name actually breaks that. But people will be suppressed. And then other paranormal activities, the hearing of voices, which is not schizophrenia, uh, and, and just weird paranormal things happening, happening to people. Like, I've seen, well, I've actually had people talk to me in case studies where they're driving and the wheel actually of the car turned off the road to try to kill them. Um, because that's what the demons will try to do is kill the person. Um, even though a believer cannot be touched, they'll try to get the person to somehow kill themselves, commit suicide, whatever. And then the fourth level is a possession. Just like we're seeing in, you know, in the movies like The Exorcist or even Nefarious, that's real. Um, and oh, and yeah. Satan possess people. Now, here's the thing. Let me make a connection about possession and oppression with what I'm seeing in the political world. When I actually look at people um that are very evil like hamas when you look into their eyes you can see the demonic spirit that's controlling yeah. them and how do i know because i've seen the eyes the eyes are yeah. the telltale sign of what's going on in the soul and you're like well what are you talking about is it a supernatural thing yeah in one sense because here's what you have to understand about demonology when a demon is taking over they will actually take over the person's face and countenance they can actually change the countenance of the individual and the way you'll know is by the eyes 
And uh, they actually come from the back of the head to the front and change the, the complexion of the person. And when you're actually looking at it, you're not looking at a human, you're looking at a demon that's actually taken the, 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 the form. Now, here's the eyes. What's the key on the eyes? When I've been in front and I've done exorcisms <clears throat> in the past, and when, you, when you're looking at a demon looking straight at you using someone's body, they'll take over the eyes and the eyes are pitch black. And they, they look like they go for a thousand miles into nowhere. Mm -hmm. It is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. It's non-human. Okay. So when I start seeing some of these world leaders and people like Hamas or whatever, or the Ayatollahs, I see the same look. I've seen it in demon-possessed people. And then when mm -hmm. I look at them on TV, I see it. And I don't, I don't expect... Uh, the secular world to understand this because you ha you have to have experience in the demonic realm. But I see it, and so what these people are doing is 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 being carried away by Satan, either possession or, or or oppression, and that's why we're seeing the brutality of the world today. Hmm. So okay, so now let's back up. So, so Pastor Brandon, let me ask you one question. I apologize. Yeah, because go, go I know I'm anytime. Yeah, uh, so I'm going to get people now. Most of the people that watch this channel are not people that are Christians. They don't claim to be Christians. Yeah. Um, and that's great because, you know, I tell Christians all the time, look, you know, we, we get a lot of criticism by the Christian community for this channel. And I tell them, I'm like, guys, this isn't geared for you. I'm not trying to reach you with the gospel. You're already reached. You know, <laughs> I mean, if, you, if you're saved, great. You know, I mean, I'm not trying to reach you. I'm trying to reach back into a community that's in bondage. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're talking about complete bondage. And when you're talking about Christians being oppressed, dude, I'm raising my hand. I'm like, I've been there. Yeah. You know, I gave myself back over to a lifestyle of pharmacia, steroids, as, as deep as you can go. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about, you know, I mean, I'm 100 pounds lighter now. You know, when you're wow. talking about 300, 320 pounds at 5'8", you can't even breathe. You know, it's, but, and then you can't stop either without an intervention from God. Wow. I mean, literally you can't yeah. stop. And, and I was obsessed with this before I could write. And here's the thing. It was a familial thing. I did not know my father. My father was a Vietnam guy who I met when I was in my late tw mid twenties in Bible college in seminary. I met him later. And uh, a Vietnam special forces guy, all that stuff, didn't even know him. We were pulled out of the house when I was four or five, didn't know him. And come to find out, he was obsessed with bodybuilding. Come okay. to find out, his dad was obsessed with bodybuilding. Okay. Now, my father, when I met him, he had already remarried. He had remarried. Had I have a half-brother with a different mom, same father. And guess what he's obsessed with? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, so it's a familiar thing through the bloodline. And when you're talking about that, man, I'm sitting there going, oh, oh, oh yeah, dude, I've been there. I, I, dude, I lived it. Yeah. Now, I see there's there's guys that are in the bodybuilding world now that are, you know, that are Christians. One of them's getting ready to compete at the Olympia. And he wins a show and he gets up and he says, hey, I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. All of this violates the Bible. I ran from God for 15 years in bodybuilding and the entire time knew I was, I was, knew I was sinning against God. I knew it. You, you can't go out and buy. The number one thing is you go out and buy an illegal drug, whether you like it or not, it's still illegal. Therefore you have, you have broken the law, which means you have broken, uh, you've sinned against God. Right. I mean, that's the that's the way it is. The other thing is you're you're like you're like Nebuchadnezzar, you know. Look at this great body I have built for my might or by my might and for my glory. Here, everybody, look at me. You're not glorifying God that way, but you're talking about this, and I'm going, oh, park right there just for a second, yeah. because so many guys are going to watch this are in this bondage, yeah. And and it, it 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 breaks my heart because I've been there and I've seen it. And the bondage is so heavy. And I'm telling you, unless 
God does something, you will you you won't come out. Yeah, you're you're making a great point, Jeff. And let me explain this to people that are non-believers. Satan's intent is to kill you. Is actually yeah. he wants to destroy you, and and he will do it by influencing you, thinking that you're going to gain something out of it. When in essence, you're actually doing a deal with the devil. Now, let me explain this uh, because people don't understand this. People make sacrifices in their life. They're going to worship something, okay? Whether it's mm -hmm. themselves or or uh, you know bodybuilding or whatever, whatever it might yeah. be. They might be narcissists. I don't know. So they they worship self. Whatever you worship, you're going to make sacrifices to it. But if it's not God, then what's behind the self-worship and the worship of anything else, fame, fortune, you know, prestige, whatever, um, it, behind that is a demon that you're actually worshiping. And you don't realize that because Paul goes in, in 1 Corinthians, he says behind every idol is a demon. Yeah. And so what people don't realize is, well, I'm not worshiping demons. Yeah, but but you don't realize you're on Satan's territory and you and you are de facto worshiping them. OK, so if I start worshiping a false god, what will start happening to me? Well, they'll start with the, le the different levels. And depending yeah. on what open door you give them, they will take full advantage of that. And their intent is to destroy you. OK, so let's say this. They see you, uh, a bodybuilder, worshiping their body or their self. Or the guy's a narcissistic, or maybe he has, uh, you know, insecurities about life, and and therefore he's going to make up for the insecurity by being a bodybuilder. Whatever, whatever the scenario is, yeah, typical. they will see that and say, let's take advantage and tempt him in this area to destroy himself. Okay, uh, whether it's steroids or whatever it might be, performance enhancing drugs, whatever. Um. At that point, then, it depends on how open the person is of going all the way. Yep. And if the person is willing to go all the way, that means they're actually opening the door for more demonic influence. Now, here's what will start happening. Demonic influence can start by anything. You just mentioned family of origin. Right. Okay. What we understand <laughs> is that a door can be opened by a parent a grandparent, and that actually can pass on to the next generation. This is why God will say, I visit the sins on the third and fourth generation. He did, God's not saying that he, he penalizes each generation for what the other generation did. He's saying, yeah. if you do not stop the cycle that started yeah. with somebody in your family and you repeat the family of origin issues, you will end up in the same boat, but worse. Yeah. So it, it gets worse every time. So right like here. you said, so what, what guys don't understand is they start opening the doors and you can open the doors through drugs, alcohol, sex, um, uh, you know, good luck charms, uh, going to psychics, tarot cards, whatever. And, and before you know it, all of a sudden you're being controlled by something else. Yeah. That's the intent is to control you and eventually kill you. So guys, people have to be real careful. Yeah, man, this is good. And and I know I derailed you a little bit, but that was so good. And, and especially for this audience. And I, I'm telling you, I am going to be much in prayer, just asking God that the right men will watch this. Do you know so many guys I competed with are dead now? They're dead. Yeah. So many of them steroid abuse and then of course that thing yeah. you know along with right. the steroids and it just I, I sat backstage at the universe several years ago before I got right with the Lord man and talked with a guy just pretty much the entire day just we talked and talked and he, he died not long after that and I was like when you know when I got right with the Lord, man, I was it. God just brought that guy to my mind. I was like, I sat there and spoke to him, talked to him the entire day. Wow! Never talked to him about Jesus, man. Yeah. And I'm gonna get emotional because it's just, man, when you've been away from God, guys, uh, and if you don't know the Lord, you you may you're not gonna understand what I'm saying. But when you've been away from the Lord, or you've been running from God, or angry and bitter, and then you come back. Dude, the regrets you're going to have is it just it's not worth it. But let me tell you something. God's grace, God's grace covers it all. And the beautiful thing is, is God still loves you. God still wants to bring you back. 
and God just wants to set you on a new path. This is not the path you have to walk. So, um, Pastor Brandon, let's, I apologize for getting you off there, but let's right. keep going in the direction you're going. If you, if you can remember where I derailed you, um, but let's keep going on. We were talking about, I believe, on the geopolitical side. Yeah. We were started talking about what, you know, demons do to people. You can yeah. see it in the eyes. And and let's let's keep going that way, because I'm going to tell you something. It, 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 can I let me just say something real quick. I told my wife we were laying Wednesday night. We were watching last, two nights ago. We were watching church, yeah. you know, watching you guys. And yeah. um Oh, by the way, I texted Tom Hughes oh, did you? when you guys had the Zoom problem. I uh -huh. said, I said, yeah, I said, Pastor Brandon's going to be looking for a video guy now. <laughs> that's right. That's right, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, so, but, um, but, but here's the thing. Um, we were, we were laying there watching, we were talking about this thing going on in Israel. And I told her, I said, you know, something about all of this stuff doesn't, doesn't ring true. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And and what doesn't make sense to me is the fact that uh, obviously Hamas is way above their pay grade on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right? I mean they're way above their pay grade. They they go in and and they don't just I I mean you're what what you were talking about the things and we've seen the videos and the pictures, you know, you follow Amir and and yeah. different guys on Telegram and stuff and you see this the I mean, we're we're talking about purely satanic evil that 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 was. I mean, you're right. I mean, chopping kids' head, babies' heads off, burning kids alive, stacking them and burning them. I mean, all of those things. None of it makes sense. And what doesn't make sense either. And this is what I told her. I said, there. I said, somebody, whoever is in charge of this thing, is is eliciting. They're baiting. Israel. This is them looking for a response. This isn't by accident. This isn't by happenstance. Yeah. They that this is plotted. It's planned, and it's not Hamas. And I, I'm not even sure. It's, I don't even think it's Iran. I think it goes much deeper than all of this. But all of this stuff, Hamas is way over their pay grade. They come in and do the most heinous things we've ever seen. Something doesn't make sense with all of it, and I think it's moving us in a direction. I think the 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 fire has been lit, the uh, the the match has been lit for things that are coming. Um, given what we just said and and where you were, let's continue. Uh, hopefully, I haven't derailed you completely, but um, let's move forward because. I mean, am I off on that? I mean, do you, am I, am I off on that with this thing with Hamas? Something's going on that doesn't make sense. Well, yeah. And, and you're right. I mean, cause you can just stay on the geopolitical level and say, well, Iran's back in them. They've been training for two years. They had this planned in August and yada, yada, yada. And that's true. That's partly yeah. true. But with, with Christianity and the Bible, you have to go to the next level. And the next level is the coordination and and the the ability to to do things at a rate that they did i mean there was a total breakdown with the idf on their intelligence and all that but here's what you have to do you eventually have to give the devil his due and what do i mean by that Th there is a demonic coordination yeah that's yeah. doing this that's that's possessing the hamas and and letting them do things you understand when i've dealt with people that are possessed you know, Jeff, you and your bodybuilders, I mean, very strong. Uh, I mean, you guys, you guys are the top of the limit as far as human strength. I have seen scrawny yeah. people yeah. overpower 10 people because yeah. a demon is possessing it and he's throwing people around across the room. And and you're you're looking at this kind of stuff and you're like, Oh, wait, that's a power that's beyond human. And so when you see yeah. Hamas being able to do things in a very well-coordinated way, it's not just Iran, it's demonic yeah. empowerment. That's what people have to realize. Okay, so when we're talking about what's going on in the Middle East, everybody's got to understand three aspects. Where is this coming from spiritually? There's a past to it. What's presently happening and where is this going for the future? So past, present, and future. 
the the answer to why all this is happening it comes back to the abrahamic covenant the god made a promise to abraham and his descendants the jews right. that that land belongs to them and through them the jewish messiah would rule and reign one day for a thousand years in jerusalem in zion okay and so ever since Satan has understood that plan of God, he has tried to thwart it. So there have been, that's why the Jews have been attacked ever since their existence. I mean, think about this. The descendants of Ishmael are the Arabs. Okay. Right. Ishmael was born to, uh, 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 to Abraham by a concubine by the name of Hagar. And Ishmael was a 20 year old guy. And started persecuting Isaac as a toddler. And that's when Abraham and Sarah said, we got to get this kid out of here. Yeah. And there's a prediction that he would be this kind of person and his and his um, descendants would be like this, that they would always strike out against their brothers, the Jews. And that's exactly what we have. OK, so this this is the where it started. So what's Satan's intent? Satan's intent is to when before messiah comes it was to destroy the line of the messiah destroy the jews completely and he always right. did many times under uh in, in persia with esther saving uh the jews there he could so he didn't stop it so messiah is born okay so what why does he continue to attack the jews because god has made promises to them that he hasn't fulfilled yet and here's what satan's intent is if he can wipe out every Jew on the planet, then God can't make good on his promises to Abraham and the Jewish people. And then he can go before God and say, you're a liar. How dare you judge me for being a liar? Because you can't, you're a hypocrite. And, and so really what he's trying to do is get off on a technicality and not be thrown into the lake of fire by trying to prevent God from establishing his promises. So that's where the animosity comes from. So the hatred that's in the, the Arab people not only comes from Ishmael, but it also comes from satanic influence. And then Islam becomes kind of the medium in which Satan uses to incite this religiously towards the towards the Jews. Right. So this is the problem. So that's that's why there's such a big deal. So anyone to dismiss this like, well, they're fighting over a piece of land. no. Right. The issue is it's an attack on God's promise. And will God make good on his promise? Because, Jeff, you and I are Christians. Okay, so God's made a lot of promises to us. Right. If we're going to trust God on his promises, he's got to make good on Israel's promises, too. Yeah. To be trustworthy. No, I agree. That's, yeah. that's, that's part of the game. So that's the past, and that's what's happening in the present. Okay. Can I ask you one question Go real ahead. quick before you run on? Um, because... The, you said something a little bit ago. God made promises to Israel. Yeah, those are those are everlasting promises. They yeah. didn't stop. Is that correct? Yeah, the, yeah. The, the Hebrew. So word the is church like, hasn't yeah. taken Israel's place. No, there's not replacement theology. Thank you very much for inserting that. Um, yeah. God has actually two peoples. He has the church, and then he has Israel. Israel right now is in a timeout. That's why the church has been doing Israel's job, because Israel went into a timeout for rejecting the Messiah. But now we're starting to see that God has brought the Jewish people back as a nation, which is which is prophecy fulfilled, and he's getting ready to use the Jewish nation again, and the end of the church age is dawning on us. That's what that, We're in a transition period right now, actually. Yeah. So anyway, um, that being the case... Um, what about what about the future? What does it mean for the future? Well, again, um, Messiah, it is predicted that Messiah, his second coming, not the rapture. OK, so there's two there's the two phases of his coming, the rapture of the church to take us home and then the tribulation will begin. Uh, and then the second coming, the second coming is actually a rescue mission by Messiah for Israel, because the Israel will make a deal with the devil, with the Antichrist. He will turn on them, betray them and try to basically finish the job, uh, the final solution to wipe every Jew on the planet. Why? Mm -hmm. Well, not only because of the promises made to the Jews, but to prevent the second coming, because the second coming of the Messiah is predicated 
It's dependent on Israel's acceptance of Jesus. Because he told them, you shall not see me again until you learn to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, which is the messianic greeting of acceptance mm. of the Messiah. Yeah. And so the tribulation is to put Israel in a vice grip to where they have no one else to turn to other than calling out for Jesus. And, yeah. and, and this, okay, so you have the future and the past. So both aspects explain geopolitically what's happening on the ground now. So this fight with Hamas, per, what, 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 what will develop is Israel will eventually be isolated by all people including the United States. Yeah. And it's to put Israel in this position to make them vulnerable, according to Daniel chapter 12, to make the break the power of the holy people so they do call out to Jesus. But here's what will happen. Unfortunately, Israel will, will stand alone. All, all nations will be against her. And then somebody will rise up and say, I will be your protector, I will be your friend, and instead of it being Jesus, it will be the Antichrist. Yeah. And he will come to their rescue, pretending to be the false Messiah, obviously, and saying, I'm here to protect you, and then make a covenant with them. So yeah. what we see with the ground attack on Hamas, it starts setting off a chain reaction of the entire Middle East. And that chain reaction, unfortunately, is going to put Israel in the crosshairs of all international community. Why? To isolate them spiritually. Yeah. So that's a, that's past, present, future, and present. So in a nutshell. Yeah. So um, question with with all of this. Tell me, tell me the timeline. Now, obviously, we don't know when Jesus is going to rapture the church. We, we don't right. know that. Yeah, I, I firmly believe, just like I've heard you say, and Tom, and and you know, you guys say numerous times that, dude, seriously, we've got to be so close at this point. I mean, the, the door, Jesus is at the door. I mean, we're in the last minutes of the last days. But but our audience really doesn't understand the timeline here. How does this attack in Hamas start yeah. start this timeline? Because like I said earlier, I believe this lights the match. So where are we now? Obviously, um, I, I, I've, I believe the, the last prophecy that had to be that had to come true before Jesus came back was um, Israel becoming a nation in 1948. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That's a birth pain. So now I've heard you say many times um, that World War One and World War Two kicked something else off. That was t tell us, tell us if you will, because that is you don't hear that anywhere. And, and I hope you remember what I'm talking about. I do. Um, yeah. So I, I've never heard that before, and and I taught history as well for years, and I love history. I'm a big history buff. Tell it back, back up just a little bit. Let me check my time here. Okay. Um, back up just a little bit into that World War One, World War Two era thing that you were talking about there. Yeah. Get me up to date. What and, and then where we are. We're not setting dates on when Jesus is coming right. back, but 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 get get us from here to here because the guys that are going to watch this, most of them have no idea what is what what is even here, you know, yeah. much less how it, you know, how everything kind of started. Good question. If you have time. You're, you're, man, great question, man. You're great. Um, okay, so when, like, a guy like me who studies prophecy, and I've been studying for 30 years, when we say we're in the last days, it's not like I'm some crazy tinfoil hat brigade guy. I mean, because any nut job can say that, right? And there's plenty of right. people on YouTube saying we're in the last days and... Ugh. But and five hundred of them telling you what day Jesus is it, coming back. Yeah, right. And when he doesn't, they just keep setting another date. Uh, they keep pushing it back, right? I mean, it, and so we all know that, and and even the secular world knows how stupid people are when they do things like that. Yeah. But from from a conservative biblical exegete of Scripture, when I say we're in the last days, I am hanging my hat on what Messiah said would be the sign that the end of the age has begun. Okay. 
So then this is where we go to the Olivet Discourse. And the Olivet Discourse is where Jesus had a private discourse with his disciples and telling them uh, a, a synopsis of how the age is going to go down. And, and they and asked this is them, Matthew 24, correct? Matthew Starts 24, okay. Mark 13, and Luke 21. So you have to put all three passages together to get a, a systematic outline. Okay, great. But, let's, but I'll stay on Matthew 24. So there's three okay. questions they ask. What is the sign of your return? What is the sign of the end of the age? And what is the sign that the temple is going to be destroyed? Those are the three basic questions they asked. Well, he answered, the sign of my return is I come in the Shekinah glory. So, okay. So that's that. And then he asked, what, what's the sign of the destruction of the temple? They said, when you see the army surrounding Jerusalem, that's when it'll happen. That happened in 70 AD. Okay. But the key one is this one that we're talking about. What is the sign for the end of the age? The age that that not only was there, you know, at, at when the, the apostles lived, yeah, uh, and, and but but extends into you and I where we're living. Okay, right. what's the sign of the end of the age? He says this. The first thing he says in Matthew twenty four are non signs. Listen carefully, everybody. Jesus answered and said to him, "Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and will deceive many." And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So what he was saying is, look, here's the, here's, here are the non-signs, non-sign, N-O-N signs. You're going to hear people come say that they're me. That's going to be, but that's a non-sign. That doesn't mean that the end of the age has begun. And then you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. And that's what we've had for the last 2000 years of wars and rumors of wars because right. war those types of wars are are non signs of my of the end of the age then he switches and now he's going to give the sign and the sign is this verse 7 for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in various places all of these are the beginning of sorrows and what, what that means is birth pains is actually the translation of that. Okay, so he says, so basically the sign is this. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, coupled with earthquakes and famines. Okay, so people read that, okay, what is nation rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom? Well, you have to go back to how they spoke in the first century. And that is what we call a Jewish idiom. Uh, kind of a way of saying, you know, like we say it's raining cats and dogs. Right. Okay. That's what an idiom is. And that's an, a rabbinic idiom, actually, that was practiced or, or used in the first century, meaning world war. So what Messiah is saying, using that rabbinic term, he says, look, the end of the age will begin when you see in history world war. Yeah. And it's going to be coupled with famines and earthquakes at the same time, which happened in, in World War II, or sorry, World War I, and has been happening ever since. So the first time in history, you're a history student, the first time we ever had World War, which is given the term World War, is yeah. World War I. Yeah. That was the first We didn't time. have the technology, really. That's I right. Mean, yeah. And the, and and the capabilities to be out, have yeah. a, uh, I mean, before then, it was regional wars and stuff like right. that. Never in the first time in history had it not had it happened until then. World War II is a continuation of World War I, actually. Okay, yeah. now here's the thing. If that's the case, did we see famines coupled with World War I? Yes, we did. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you look at the earthquakes increasing from the earthquake centers, they have been on a steady incline, massive, oh, yeah. uh, since that time. Okay, but here's another question. That sign has been given, which means that the countdown has started. The birth pains have started. Now, it says that that's, it be, the, it, the last days has begun, but we don't know how long they go. That's why you can't set dates. Right. But, but based on that, technically speaking, I can say biblically we are in the last days and we have been since World War I. Now, let me add another feature to this. Both world wars, get this, played a significant part in getting Israel back into the land, yeah. which was predicted by the prophets. 
that Israel would be pulled out of all the nations and come back into the land. So World War I, what happened? You had the Balfour Declaration. And then in World War II, basically, they recognized the UN and the United States recognized Israel as a nation at that point in time. And part Britain partitioned the land for them. So both wars played a part in Zionism. Mm. And so this is technically why we say we're in the last days is because the sign has been given, world war. The problem is, I don't know how long we go. I'm I'm like it in the great moment with Tom. I don't know how how I don't I, I just can't imagine going longer yeah. than 50 years or 20 years. I mean, because there's so much convergence of things, something's gonna pop. And, and and so um, that's why we we always continue to say look up um, because the rapture could happen at any point in time. Yeah, we have adopted the um, the mentality that you know what Jesus could come back today, but we're going to live like he is not yeah. coming back for another ten years because right. perfect. I, I know so many people that they have become um, almost paralyzed. In their Christian life, you know, I mean, and in regular everyday life, and I'm like, I'm like, dude, you still got to occupy. You still have kids that are going to college and all of this stuff. You're you're not you're not ignoring the fact that Jesus could come back, but you're you are living life like God wants you to live. And while you're here, do something that God wants you to do, man. Go go tell somebody about Christ. <laughs> I mean, yeah. look, I got a daughter that's not saved. You know, and, and, you know, and, and two grandkids from her and, and, you know, man, I want Jesus to come back, but my heart breaks for her and, 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 you know, my son claims to be saved, but he doesn't live like it and they'll, they'll never watch any of this. Yeah. But, you know, I don't, I don't know. So man, I, I want Jesus to come back, but I was talking to even my daughter last night and we were talking about some things and she brought it up and, and I was like, you know, Hey, since you brought it up, let's we'll talk about it a little bit. And and I told her, I was like, you know, honey, if you hear that millions of people have disappeared and and I will be gone. And I said, when you hear that, I said, you know, try to get to my house if you can. I, I think there's going to be pure chaos in the world. Oh, but yeah. But if you can get here, get here. There, you know, there there'll be a car here, that type of thing, you know, for you. I said, but, and, she, and you know what she told me? She goes, you know, dad, she goes, and because I told her, I was like, you know, wouldn't you, I said, because our grandkids are going to, your grandkids are going to go. They're, they're so, they're, they're, they're babies, basically. I said, yeah, they're, yeah. and she said, well, then at least you'll have something of me with you. Oh, wow. And I told her, I said, you know, honey, I said, that just breaks my heart. And, and so we talked a little more and, and I talked to her about the, the the you know what will happen during the tribulation of the mark of the beast i said Good. she said she said don't worry dad i won't take it i oh, said God. i said you won't accept jesus now but you're telling me you won't try to avoid death by taking a mark in the in the tribulation i said honey that doesn't make much sense so um so you know obviously we're you know we pray and and pray and pray for our kids just as i'm sure you you know have loved ones that are, may may not be saved too but yeah, um, it's a tough deal because um, you, ha you what I describe it is is you have to live with two narratives in your your in your mind. Um, first of all, that Jesus come back at any point in time, or he might extend us to be here for some time. And you have to you have to you can't put your life on hold, um, but you have to yeah. live in a way that I I'm ready to go. My bags are packed any point in time because why does he still have us here, Jeff? The whole point yeah. is, I'm not sitting back putting on the white sheet and waiting. I got to get to work. I got, yeah. I got to, I got to do what my father wants me to do, my heavenly father, and the mission that I have. You have a mission, and the, your listeners, if they're unsaved, God has a, a a mission for you to complete. And and if you're not doing that, you're wasting your life. And that's wow. the saddest thing that people can do is just waste their life because they're doing their own agenda. Rather than the Lord, understand the Lord built us and equipped us with certain things that he wants us to be able to accomplish. It's his plan and purpose for us. But people are not living up to that. Uh, and yeah. it's sad. And, and that's why they can't find meaning in life. And they're searching um, because they're not on mission for the Lord. Very sad. Well, you know, 
when in and I keep going back to 2019, obviously, because that was a uh, that was a watershed year. That was that was uh, one of those years uh, in my life, you know, that uh, I can point to and say, man, God really did work in my life there. And but I look at that time and I ran from the Lord for 15 years and went as hard back into bodybuilding as I could. You know, the funny thing is, is all those years I was out. I, I didn't walk into gym. I didn't walk into a gym till I was 41. Oh, really? And yeah, wow. no, did not even go to a gym because it, it was a, it was a, it was a bondage for me all the way from the time before I could write bef- all the way up until, you know, I, I got out of it, but, yeah. but so I didn't walk into a gym till I was 41. And you know, the, the thing is, is I gave up 15 years of my life. Now, thankfully, you know, and, and you've got to look at this and go, you know what? God is sovereign. He knew that that was going to happen. Sure. You know, he knew. And none of that caught him by surprise. I don't like it, obviously, you know, but there's, you know, there's nothing you can do. So, so you ask God to redeem that time. So, so what I did, you know, because man, I got off, off all the drugs and, you know, I even told you how much drugs bodybuilders take, especially pros you know, it would probably shock you. Most people don't have a clue, you know, everything from, you know, insulin to growth hormone to every peptide you can think to every drug you can imagine, including ecstasy and all of this other stuff you get involved in, in that, in that sport and life. And I can remember that morning when I got right with the Lord and over the next few weeks, and, um, and you, you don't even know this, but you, your ministry, God used your ministry in such a powerful way in my life. I mean, okay. I had, we had actually started to watch, uh, because we were locked down like everybody else. We had started yeah. to watch my mom tried to get us to watch you and Tom and Jack and, and we just turned it on and started watching one day and, and it, you know, in, in, you know, when, when you've been running from God for 15 years, I don't care if you went to Bible college or not, your faith is anemic. Yeah. You know, you, uh, you know, and I was just like, man, I I've got some serious recovery to do. So we, I, I can remember praying. I was like, God, I ran for 15 years. I'm just asking for 15 years. If, 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 if you'll let me, God, I, I'd like 15 years to, to make up for that. <laughs> you know, Amen. now, yeah. yeah, I mean, look, and that just may be a purely human thing, but, but man, I don't want to go to God. I just, you know, look, I already know, and I tell people all the time, dude, when when I when when I stand before Jesus, and I think anybody, I'm going straight to my face. Yeah, you know, there, there. How do you, how do you stand before how do you stand before Jesus? I mean, you know, I mean, I think just out of out of reverence and a godly fear and a, just a, an overwhelming love, you. You got to go to your face, man. You know, I mean, you know, but I can remember asking the Lord for 15 years. And then, you know, we waited several years to start this podcast because we just felt like we weren't ready. And then my wife finally said, let's do it. But the one thing that that I know is I'm watching the world go by and I'm watching all of this stuff take place. And everything is just winding down. Now, I I agree it could go another 10 years, but if it does what in the world is this world going to look like in 10 years? Well, that, that yeah, and and that's where everyone needs to assess and and get into reality. I'm always about getting into reality. You yeah. cannot ignore what's happening around you. And, and just from the simple fact of we we can't we have people that can't figure out what is a male or a female. Come on now, yeah. um, you know I mean, and and really we're going down this path. We used to lock people up in insane asylums for this. Okay, yeah, I'm not trying to be derogatory towards anybody, but we're we're entertaining mental illness and saying it's yeah. legit. Our our health and human services uh, uh, guy or is pretending to be a girl for the United States, and it's like what a joke. If you cannot see the world crumbling around you, we're on the verge of World War III. Yeah. 
I, I, we have never been closer than we ever have to this. And, 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 and a lot of the invasions that is predicted by Ezekiel and Psalm, uh, Psalm 83 that will happen to the Israel, this stuff is about to go down in the near future. I mean, the, the pieces of the puzzle are getting in place. Think about this, Jeff. The prophet Ezekiel makes a prediction that in the latter times, a coalition will form against Israel, which will be led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey. Yeah. I mean, they're aligned. I mean, after 2,500 years, the alignment's happening. And now we have a problem that if Israel continues to go and take Hezbollah out and take Hamas out, Iran said, we're going to do everything we can until you bring in Iran, you bring in Russia, you bring in Turkey, and all of a sudden you're in World War III. Yeah. It, it just instantaneously. Yeah. And, and if people can't recognize, oh, my goodness, my whole world is crumbling around me, what is the solution? Well, it's the Lord. It's the Lord that's the solution that has the answer. And let me yeah. let me explain a little bit more for, for other guys, because I come into the ministry from an athletic background. Yes. Um, I, I, I played ball, uh, baseball in college. I was a left-handed pitcher. And uh, what happened is, and I'll talk to your guys that are bodybuilding, my identity was in what I did. Yeah. I was a baseball player. That's all I knew. And here's what happened. God finally redirected me after I got saved at 19 and said, I don't want you doing this anymore because baseball has become an idol to you. Yep. Your identity is not found in baseball. Your identity is found in me. And, and so what happened is he broke me down physically um, to where I actually couldn't throw anymore. I, I had Tommy John surgery, whole nine yards. Oh, wow. I lost velocity and my hopes and dreams of going pro were shattered because of that Tommy John. But what was God trying to say? Well, he broke me down so I would lose my performance identity mm. to find out I was nothing. And then, then to build me back up to say, this is who you are in Jesus. Yep. And I can tell you that most guys in the athletic world that you're from, yeah. I know that world, yep. they derive their identity based on being a bodybuilder, being an athlete. But what happens when you can't do it anymore? Yeah. You will lose that identity. And God is trying to, to, to use what's happening around you to say, you're not who you really think you are. You're this. Yeah. And, and, and so it's a big deal. Identity for men is a big deal, man. Yeah. Uh, no, we, um, as a matter of fact, when, when I retired out the first time in my twenties, the transition was easy. I got saved, you know, you're on fire for God, all of that stuff. When I was, you know, came and, and went back into it, running from God, angry and bitter, and then in 2019, it was actually easy to get out because the same thing I, I had, I had already told you, God had so was so disciplining me in different areas of my life. I mean, I, I told you I was in a single car accident. That was a freak accident. Side airbags go off out of nowhere and just blow up and hit me in the side of my head, like a bomb. It was so bad that yeah. blew all the rubber out of the side of the truck and it just, it malfunctioned and it put a knot in my, in my neck. Now I was always known for big traps and, okay. and that kept me from really, I guess, I don't know. I mean, I say probably breaking my neck, but yeah, but well, you know, they don't, my neck doesn't have a, ho a whole lot of way to go, <laughs> you know, but it hit me so hard. I had a huge knot on the back of my, on the back of my neck. And before I knew it, um, we were in the gym and I was getting ready for a show. It was my first show going to be back. And, you know, we get on the incline press. It's, it's a day for a chest and, you know, you, you know, you're, you're, you're warming up 225 for a set of 20, 315 for a set of 20, 405 for a set of 10, 15. And then you go up into the five hundreds. And when I got to the four hundreds, you know, normally you're just banging them out. And then all of a sudden, I'm going and in my left side won't work. And oh no. Well, thankfully I had guys that caught it. But the next thing I knew for the next 18 months, my hand starts curling under and oh. I started doing this number. And see, it still does it. But 
had such nerve damage that ended up just taking me completely out, you know, went to a neurologist. They were like, yeah, you've, you've got a pretty serious deal going on. You're, you're pretty much done. And so I thought, well, okay, you know, here we go. Well, unfortunately, you know, I doubled down and then still ended up going back and competing in, in getting my card. But the point is when I got right with the Lord in 2019, I all of a sudden had to had to even though it was easy to quit because God had broken me down, tore yeah. my left lat off the spine. Yeah. And yeah. just tore it completely off the spine and didn't even know it because wow. of the nerve damage. Wow. And found out when I was going to the Mr. Universe, uh found out God was like, uh, "Man, when did you tear your your lat?" I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, I mean, I can't oh, see man. it. And I'm like, I, "I didn't notice it." And then, you know, so I go back to the doctor and the doctor's like, yeah, it's torn. And, and, you know, and he told me, he goes, you know, the problem with guys like you and probably you throwing in that athletic background, yeah. you, you, you live with discomfort and pain so much. You don't you're, realize when you're hurt. You're right. Uh, that's true. That's so true. I pitched yeah. in pain all the time and I, yeah. I would uh, medicate to kill the pain so I could pitch. Yeah. And so with a bodybuilder, you live in extreme discomfort. I'm like, you know, and so, you know, I was like, dude, that was a great workout, man. My back is really sore. You idiot. <laughs> you tore the spot. You tore your lat, you know, right. but, but God, but here's the thing in my point is sorry for the long way around, oh, but it's good, man. It's good stuff. The, the point is this God had made it and put roadblocks in my life where I couldn't go back now if I wanted to. Yeah. My right arm is now shrinking differently than my right or my left arm than my right arm because of the nerve damage is back my left pec is almost gone completely now because of all that god made it to where this is what i tell people god if you're saved and you're running from god god will eventually corner you in yeah he does and you got a choice to make you got a choice are you going to keep moving forward in rebellion against god are you going to get right with god but understand there is a sin unto death. In other words, you can get to a point where God's going, you know what? I'd rather take you home than leave you here on this planet. I, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe I was right there because yeah. of how far I had gone. And um, and you please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I do believe that God will, you know, you can get to a point where God either says you're out, you know, and, and takes you home. But yeah, um, he does. You're you're totally right. I mean, if you you decide to do a prodigal son move on him, and you and you won't come back, yeah. um, sometimes he'll take you home. You'll you'll die an early death, unfortunately. Yeah. And that's that's all through scripture, by the way. Yeah. And and you got to remember, like what you and I are talking about, and the guys listening to us is, um, what has God got to do to get our attention? I mean, he broke. Oh, me that's down. good. You know, he broke you down. Yes. And and and, and there's a, a situation in the in the Old Testament where Jacob is wrestling with the, the, the Lord at night and he yeah. doesn't realize it's the Lord, but he's wrestling with this guy. And he's and and really that's our we're wrestling with the Lord too until we surrender to him. And yeah. so he's wrestling with him, and the Lord, knowing it's Jacob, says, What's your name? And the Lord knows his name, but why does he ask him that? Because he wants Jacob to admit who he really is. Because Jacob fronts. Jacob is a manipulator. Yeah. And when I when I was playing ball, I fronted with my athleticism. That's and I good. hid, I hid what I was ashamed of inside. And mm. this is the heart of it. So you start wrestling with God and he starts breaking you down like he tapped. Jacob's hip and said, you know, basically I can take you down at, at any point in time. When he yeah. started tapping my arm like that and where I couldn't throw hardly anymore, he was saying, uh, he was saying to me, Brandon, who are you? Are oh, you the good. baseball player? Are yeah. you the, 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 the believer in Christ? Yeah. And I, I, I wrestled with him for about three years afterwards. And I'm telling you, that's every man's wrestle. Yeah. Will you let go of your false identity, the front that you put up in front of everybody to humble yourself and say, no, this is who I am in Christ. That's a yeah. hard work, but it yeah. has to be made. 
I tell people all the time, people go, Oh, Jerry's Jeff, the bodybuilder. I'm like, no, actually I'm not, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, in the first place, you know, uh, that's not who I am. And, and the, the crazy thing is, is I never let that define me. Cause you know, I would tell people all the time, I was like, you think I'm a meathead, you know, because you judge the book by its cover and I get it. I mean, rightfully so, but I can actually carry on a conversation. I've got two degrees. I, you know, I, I, I was at first Baptist Merritt Island and first Baptist, um, uh, Naples okay, uh, years ago. And, um, that's a whole conversation for another time about the modern day church, but, uh, it's corporate climbing as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, um, so, but you know, yeah, sorry, yeah, I digress, but you know, in, in all of this, let, let me, let me just break it down here. Cause I, I need to honor your time. Cause I know you have an appointment in, in all of this guys. I, th I think what we're saying today is look what's going on in the world. Yeah. Examine your life, man. Look how the future is so uncertain. And then while you have today, get right with God. If you don't know Jesus, man, Come to know Jesus today. Amen. All you have to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You shall be saved. Man, repent of your sin, dude. You know, it, it's God's made it so easy, and yet it's so hard, isn't it? I know, right? It, it, yeah, it, to, to give up the old identity, to give up your old lifestyle is very difficult. That's what holds a lot of people back. But here's what people, uh, let me add one more thing to, to yeah, this. Yeah, please. People are afraid, well, if I do this, Brandon, and you're telling me the world is is crumbling around me and we're going into prof a prophetic scenario, which is basically Armageddon, the end of the world. Yeah. I said, yeah, yeah, it's true. But and well, I'm I'm a young guy. I want to get married. I talked to my boy and he's 21 and, and he's like, well, Dad, you're telling me my life's going to end because Jesus is coming back. I want to get married, have kids, all this stuff. I said, hey, hey, time out, time out. I said, what you don't understand is the kingdom age. It's yeah. not that we just um, we're going to be raptured and all of a sudden we're 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 strumming a harp on a cloud. I go, that's not that's wrong. <laughs> There's a kingdom coming. Yeah, and in that kingdom, you get your life back. Yeah. Everything you lost in this life, your health, relationships. Maybe you lost your childhood. Maybe you lost a marriage. Whatever, you get your life back. And he says a hundredfold. A hundredfold. What do you mean a hundredfold? Yeah, this is how gracious God is. That if you yeah. trust him, he goes, I will make up for everything you lost. I will wipe away every tear from your eye. And, and because of that, that's where our real future is. Because guys, you're going to lose in this life. I, that's just the way the world is. It's sin yeah. cursed. Mm -hmm. But if you want your life back, I want my childhood back. I want my 20s back or what? I want my health. You get it in the next one. So that's what Jesus promised you when he says, I will give you eternal life. Yeah. You get your life back. So guys, you're not going to lose out by accepting Jesus. You're not, you're not, you say, well, I'm not, I'm not going to have fun or anything or whatever. No, 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 no. He's going to give everything back, but he can't do it here. There's too much sin and evil in this yeah. world. He has to expunge it out first. That's what the tribulation is about. And then he can create paradise for us and that's what he promises so there's a lot there guys amen well pastor brandon uh man <laughs> about forty eleven thousand uh things we could talk about but i, know, right? I, I really <laughs> want to honor your time here well i have um, to do it again and, my friend oh yeah i would trust me i've had uh p garcia comes on about uh every two or three weeks and yeah pete's a good um, guy i like him yeah pete's a good guy man we uh we just did normalcy bias and it just uh yeah. aired just a little bit ago and um but uh matter of fact it aired about one o'clock i think and uh, it's got if you, you'll notice the video because the thumbnail has a bodybuilder in a bubble and, you know, and the idea is your bubble's about to pop. <laughs> so, but everything there I do on this channel has to be geared towards bodybuilding, you know, because that's where these guys are. So, sure, uh, no, that's be great, man. You, you have become all things reason. to all men so that I might by all means win some. And we've had Thank guys you. get saved, man. It's, it's so cool. I, I will tell you this one story. And, and I mean, literally, 
Um, gentleman over in South Africa, he watches this, watches the Wednesday night Bible studies for men and everything. And he went, he got a Bible for him and his two boys and they watch and use this as church. Uh, and, and wow. I'm like, wow. I'm like, I know churches you should watch. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, uh, I, well, I'm not a pastor. So, well, yeah, but let, let me tell you something. Back then, I used to consider myself a, a good speaker and in, in all of that stuff. And, and yeah, you know, would speak, you know, Sunday mornings, multiple services, things like that at times. And, but something happens over time, you know, and you go, you know, God started pressing on me about stuff. And I was like, yeah, no, thanks. Yeah, and God, you know, because I was asked to speak a couple of weeks ago, and I was like, "Yeah, I really don't want to do that. I'm not very good at this anymore. <laughs> I just, <laughs> it's really hard. And now it's very, very hard. It used to be so easy, and now it's yeah. very difficult. So, um, you that. know, it, it's just uh, I, I'm a, lo a lot more reluctant to do that. But, but you know, trying to get out of my comfort zone at this point, and you know, do what God's told me to do. So. That's all you can do. So, well, you're getting the truth out, J uh, Jeff, and and understand this: there are so few voices out there now. I mean, there's tons of voices, but they're not telling the truth, and they're sugarcoating yeah. everything. And God bless you for being out there because we need more guys like yourselves and more more men to stand up um, that have a spine against all this evil. So you're doing it. Keep it up, man. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I will uh, I will be back in touch with you and tapping you on the shoulder. Hey, uh, Pastor Brandon. Hello, Pastor Brandon. <laughs> so, anytime, anytime. Yeah. I'll have myself available for you, brother. If, if, if it reaches one guy, that's all I yeah. care, man. One yeah. guy, just one guy, eternity has changed. That's unbelievable. So I love that. Well, again, thank you so much okay. and uh, enjoy the rest of your day and your weekend. God bless you. I finally did a podcast my wife will watch. Amen. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming in. This is Impact. The Impact. Down